If you own a Synology NAS that has two or more LAN interfaces, consider setting up link aggregation. Link aggregation is a networking technique that combines multiple physical network connections into a single logical connection, providing increased bandwidth and fault tolerance. To clarify what link aggregation does, I'll use my Synology DS224 Plus as an example. It has two 1 gigabit LAN ports that both can be connected to a router with multiple LAN ports or a switch. Additionally, if you have a managed switch that supports link aggregation, you can utilize different link aggregation modes. It's important to understand that link aggregation provides increased bandwidth to your Synology NAS, but doesn't increase the connection speed for a single client. For example, if the switch had 2.5 gigabit ports, and it connected a PC that also supports 2.5 gigabit Ethernet to it, I wouldn't get a 2 gigabit connection to the NAS. The connection speed would still be limited to that of a single 1 gigabit LAN interface on the NAS. What link aggregation does is provide more 1 gigabit connections to the NAS. For example, if I were to connect another client to the switch, that client would also get up to a 1 gigabit connection to the NAS rather than needing to share a single 1 gigabit connection if link aggregation wasn't configured. Hopefully that makes sense. As we continue through the video, the examples that I run through will make this point much clearer. To begin, I'm going to install the Open Speed Test Docker container as a project using Container Manager. This container isn't required to set up link aggregation and will only be used to test the link aggregation configurations that we'll go through in the video. If you do want to set up Open Speed Test on your Synology NAS, you can follow along with the steps documented in the description below. Once Open Speed Test is installed, I'll run a baseline speed test using two clients connected to my TP-Link BE9300 router. My DS224 Plus is also connected to the router with both LAN ports connected but without link aggregation configured. Now I'll connect to the Open Speed Test container through a web browser on both clients and run a speed test on both systems at the same time. Here we can see that each client isn't getting the full 1 gigabit transfer speed to the NAS because they are both sharing the bandwidth through a single gigabit LAN port. If I run the same speed test from a single client, the transfer speed is much better because it isn't sharing the bandwidth anymore and has full access to the gigabit LAN port. Next, I'll start setting up link aggregation. I'll bring up TSM, select Control Panel, then Network. From here, I'll select Network Interface, click Create, then Create Bond. For this first link aggregation setup, I'll leave Adaptive Load Balancing selected. This is a basic form of link aggregation that distributes traffic across the available links without requiring a managed switch, so I won't need to change anything with my network setup. For physical devices, I'll use both LAN ports. I'll leave Network Configuration as DHCP and click Done. I'll then click Yes on this pop-up window to complete the setup. Now if I run the same speed test from both of my computers at the same time again, we can see definitive improvements with speed just by enabling link aggregation. Next, I'll introduce a TP-Link TLSG-108E smart switch into the setup. This smart switch only supports static link aggregation or lag groups, and I've set up ports 1 and 2 to be part of group ID lag 1, which you see from this screenshot. Next, I'll bring up DSM, edit the Bond 1 interface, and change the link aggregation mode to Balance XOR which supports static link aggregation.
Now I'll move the network cables for my DS224 Plus from my router to ports 1 and 2 of the TP-Link smart switch. I'll move both of my client computers to the switch as well and add a uplink network cable from the router to the switch for DHCP and internet access. At this point, I'll run another speed test from both client systems at the same time once again. With this speed test, it looks like the download task shared a LAN port on the NAS, whereas the upload appears to be getting close to a gigabit of bandwidth for each client, indicating that both LAN ports on the NAS are being utilized. The next setup I'll go over is dynamic link aggregation. For this, I'll be using a Netgear ProSafe GS108T managed switch that supports link aggregation control protocol, or LACP. The configuration requires setting up a lag group set up with a lag type of LACP. Then switch ports need to be assigned as members of the lag group. Once this is in place, from within DSM, change the link aggregation mode to IEEE 802.3 AD dynamic link aggregation and click OK. On the switch end, I moved everything that was connected to the TP-Link TL-SG108E smart switch to the Netgear ProSafe GS108T managed switch, making sure to plug the DS224 Plus LAN ports into ports 1 and 2 on the switch. Now, with link aggregation set up once again, I'll run another speed test from both clients, which seems to show a combination of utilizing a single LAN port, then both LAN ports of the NAS. One thing I'd like to mention, if you run virtual machines using the Virtual Machine Manager package, the link aggregation and bond interface options will change because Open vSwitch needs to be enabled. Once enabled, you'll need to select the link aggregation mode you'd like to use. If you were using IEEE 802.3 AD dynamic link aggregation, you can simply switch to balanced TCP IP and everything will work when you make the change. You also won't have an option like balanced XOR for static link aggregation when open vSwitch is enabled. Hopefully, this video helped you gain a better understanding of link aggregation. If it did, consider liking the video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also, if you are looking for a NAS router or switches that you could use to set up link aggregation in your network, check out the description where I list the hardware I used in making this video. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work or hire me for a project, check out the links on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.